Hi, I'm at the Iron Magazine Global Forum 2019 in Paris, and I'm here with Richard Lacay, Global Chief Investment Officer at State Street Global Advisors. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You're speaking on a panel today, which covered you know, a number of different topics, but including passive investment. I wonder if you could give us a bit of a broad overview about what's happening in that area. Um, it's something that IRO is obviously interested in, watching more and more money flow into passive strategies. Is that something that they should expect to continue or could, you know, could there be a revival of active investment? Well, indexing has had tremendous growth over the last 30 years or so. Um, and the reason it has, it's a very good value proposition for the end customer. I think there are many reasons why we'd expect that growth to continue in the future. Uh, but it does place a challenge for IRs because they're a different type of investor and they need to be interfaced with in different ways. And in terms of that growth, I mean, uh, most of that growth has happened in the North American or the US market um, you know, compared to Europe so far. But is that situation changing? Is Europe starting to catch up? Well, as you hear from my accent, I am, I am from Europe. Um, I, we've had an indexing business uh, in the UK and Europe for quite a number of years. I think like many financial uh, innovations, it, it started in the US, but it spread pretty rapidly. Uh, so we're seeing rapid growth in Asia, uh, in Europe and elsewhere. And I think that'll continue as, in a sense, particularly wealth management markets catch up with the US. Okay. And I mean, the, the growth of passive invent investment has led IROs to think more about indices and you know what how you know how their company is covered by different indices where they might be included or not you talk us a bit about that area i mean what are some of the new indices that are being created at the moment but and, and where where's most of the money sitting well most money is in actually in market cap weighted indices um and there's familiar brand names like standard and pools FTSE, uh, msci that track the world's stock markets. Um, so I think an IR would see on the share register the very large index fund managers, but underneath that effectively would be the index family that the, the, the customers there are, are tracking. Um, and the big players like us are tracking many indices for many different clients. Um, it is important to know which index you're in because the index rules might mean ultimately that your company might change either domiciliation or even get deleted from an index. The good news is they're pretty rules based. So it's pretty easy to predict which index you're likely to be in and how material that is for your company. There are new index families um, arriving as investors change their focus from market cap weighted to factor based indexes. So people are interested in buying value stocks or getting a better than average ESG rating. There are specialized indexes that focus on that. Great. And maybe, I mean, one final question. I mean, the question that IROs are asking is what can they do about all this? You know, more money is, um, you know, flowing towards passive strategies. I mean, how can IR sort of engage with that money? Can they? They can engage. Um, obviously, index funds own a vast portfolio. Um, so that changes the way we think about engagement ourselves. So governance issues, environmental, social issues become very important because they're long term drivers of performance. So our engagement uh, team and our stewardship team are more interested in those long-term factors because in a sense, the index fund provides permanent capital. Um, and so we're very interested in the long-term. And I think that's a really useful uh, piece of information for IRs because there'll be many investors who are too short-term. And in a sense, we are the opposite. We're interested in the long-term and we're interested in the company's response and positioning on those long-term issues, particularly ESG. And maybe just uh, you know one additional question just on that topic of ESG. It's come up a lot at the conference here um, this week. Is it, can you pick up maybe one area within that that you're particularly focused on at the moment? Well, it's industry by industry. And importantly, you, you need to focus on what's important and material. And that's what the SASB framework is very effective at that. Um, but I think governance is important for all companies. And I think where we look back over the last 30 or 40 years, where we've had real damage to our shareholders, it's been where governance has been weak. So I think that's universal. There'll always be a tension. So board diversity, refreshment, policies at board level are very, very important. Great. Well, Richard, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you.